If you're here, you've probably been venturing into the old world trying to go viral on Spooktube. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was f***ing awesome! That was nice! But before you make another dive, we here at the leaderboard hope to arm you with some information on the monsters that you'll find down there. From the harmless mouth to the terrifying big slap. We've got you covered as we go through every monster in content warning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Steam user Neftalito. Without you, we wouldn't know the proper names of these entities, and y'all would be hearing Snail Boy and Big Mouth and other random names from me. Additionally, I'd like to give thanks to World End Wonder and Carrot T on Steam as they put together a good document about what's the LAL system, which is the lethality assessment level, a scale that determines the danger level of these monsters and entities. With that being said, let's start with monsters in LAL 1, which are generally harmless to the player. The first monster we'll be covering is Jelly. This jello looking creature doesn't do much in the way of actual damage to the player, however it will chase and trap the player within its blobby body and take them to the closest slurper on the map. Or if there are none on the map, we'll take the player to the farthest area. Kinda reminds me of Bracken from Lethal Company. Except you're not dead right away. Let me tell you, it is fast. And honestly for me, a little hard to spot because of its uh, transparent body. If you do encounter one, you gotta think quick and juke it to avoid capture. Next up we have Mouth, or as my squad likes to call it, Big Mouth. Mouth reminds me of uh, Donnie Thornberry from that old cartoon, The Wild Thornberries. It's smiling, it's fast, and it'll occasionally let out a terrifying scream if the player isn't paying attention. However, it's all bark and no bite. And the more you look at Mouth, the faster it'll turn tail and zoom away from the player. When I first encountered these guys, I really thought they were gonna like eat me or something, but instead they just kind of stare menacingly before running away. Now we're moving on to LAL2 monsters. These monsters are a little more dangerous than the previous batch and can actually harm or kill the player if they're not careful. Our first LAL2 monster on the list is the Zomb. Zombie? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Z-O-M-B-E. Or as I like to call him, Snail Boy, because it's literally a zombie humanoid snail monster. These monsters are slow and can be outrun pretty easily. If you encounter this guy, avoid getting too close or it'll grab you and leech off a little bit of your life. These snail boys aren't too threatening on their own, however, it's when they're paired with more of its own or one of the other faster old world monsters that they become a little bit more of a nuisance. While the other monsters are doing their thing and you're trying to avoid them, the random snail boy might come up from behind and grab you, making you an easier target for the other monsters. Anyway, check, check, is this thing on? Good because our next monster is the ear. Yes, it's a monster with a big ol' ear. You thought I was gonna say big ol' ears, but no, it's just one ear. Ears remind me of uh, tall, skinny greyhound dogs, but with an ear instead of a head. <laughs> if you've played Lethal Company, which you'll notice I will be pulling from several times in this video, you're probably familiar with the eyeless dogs and their attraction to sound the players make. While the ears are similar in the sense that they like noise and if they hear the player talking, they'll make their way to the player and pounce on him. However, unlike the eyeless dogs, ears are hypersensitive to sound and will run away the more you shout at it. Like, actually shout at it. Gotta show that you're the alpha in this situation. <laughs> Next, we have Snatcho. These shadow-like creatures are sneaky little quadrupeds that stalk oblivious players before grabbing them and dragging them to hell. I mean, away from the pack. While dragging the player, Snatcho will give the player some damage, so there is a chance the player might die if they're at low health already. In order to stop them, you'll have to shine your light on it, cause Snatcho doesn't like light at all. Moving on to LAL3, we're now covering some monsters that will actively be able to kill players, but are survivable with the right countermeasures. The first of the batch is the Slur. These starfish looking creatures hide up in the ceiling trapping players in their weird tentacle hands when players run under them and pull them up against their will. Kind of like uh, the barnacle from the Half-Life series. The slurper then slowly feeds on the player, damaging them until the player dies. I've been caught so many times by this thing, mainly because I'm too preoccupied with getting the right shot to pay attention to my surroundings. Thankfully, if players have a buddy, all they've got to do is throw something at the slurper and the slurper will drop the player to the ground and free them from its clutches. See, I haven't successfully freed myself from the slurper, but I guess if you can throw something while trapped, you can free yourself? But I haven't been able to do that, so let us know in the comments if you've been able to do that, or if it's just impossible. Anyway, next up, we've got the Whisker, or as the in-game ID calls it, Toolkit Whisk, but more on that in a bit. 
The whisker is a funny thing. It's a walking humanoid creature with an electric whisk on its head. These monsters are usually found just minding their own business on the map. However, once you're in its sights, it'll face right at you before charging directly, making a horrible whisking sound while doing so. Thankfully, these creatures are like bulls in video games and will charge straight and only straight. So you can sidestep it and clear it pretty easily. I think it even gives you like a little time, like there's a two second charge before it actually runs at you. You, you see it stare at you for a bit and then it charges. So yeah, they're pretty easy to read, but once you dodge it, just don't stand there too long because the whisker will probably ready itself for another charge before you know it. Anyway, back to why this monster is called Toolkit Whisk. While not in the game, there seems to be unused files for multiple Toolkit monsters, each with a different tool of destruction. The monsters part of the Toolkit family include Toolkit Fan, Toolkit Hammer, Toolkit Iron, and Toolkit Vacuum. Will we ever see these used in game? Who knows? Hopefully the game gets an update because honestly, I'm having a lot of fun and just having more variety with the monsters is great. Anyway, our next monster is the gun dog and they're exactly what they sound like. These are like Boston Dynamic dogs with machine guns mounted on their backs and they will shoot to kill. You'll know there's a gun dog around once the room is bathed in a red light, which means that there's a gun dog actively scanning for players. When a player is in sight, they have a few seconds while the gun dog locks in before peppering the target with bullets. The bullets themselves do little damage, it's just the amount of bullets over time that's the killer. In order to avoid getting destroyed, you just gotta hide behind something and the scan shouldn't be able to spot you. The gun dog is obviously gonna be walking around so you still have to avoid him, but just hide behind something and you should be fine from the bullets. Another creature using tools of warfare is the bomber. When I first encountered this monster, I wasn't exactly sure what it was gonna do. It looked like Cthulhu, so at first I was like, it's probably just gonna attack us with some crazy attack, something terrifying and completely beyond comprehension, and I was readying myself for it, but instead, what the bomber did was it hopped towards us like a frog and latched onto my buddy and blew up. Yeah. The bomber is just what its name implies, a bomber, and it'll do its best to rid the player with explosives. It doesn't always latch onto the player, sometimes it'll grab bombs from its body and just throw them. And luckily there's plenty of time to run away from said bombs if thrown, which is about five seconds according to some players online. You can even grab the bombs that the bomber throws as long as they haven't already exploded, which is so funny to me. I haven't tried it personally, but uh, people have, so it's possible. Next up, we have Nifo. This creepy little ghost boy was the third monster I had ever encountered in Content Warning, and let me tell you, I was actually a little disturbed because it just started giggling and relentlessly chasing. Nifo, who my friends and I usually called Ghost Boy, chases the closest player, stabbing them and costing them a third of their health. Sometimes it'll even do a little dive towards the player in an attempt to hurt them. My squad's only ever encountered one ghost boy at a time, but I've heard reports that they can come in hordes, similar to other smaller monsters in the game. Next up, we have Weeping. This large monstrosity is a giant cage-like being that rolls around the map, capturing unknowing players and forcing their friends to prove they're not robots by asking them to complete a simple capture. If you do fail the capture multiple times, the Weeping will kill the trap player and stay in place for the rest of the day. So the Weeping goes by many names such as Iron Maiden or Weeping Angel, the Doctor Who creature whose behavior the Weeping Angel is most inspired by. And like Weeping Angels and even Coilheads in Lethal Company, the Weeping doesn't move when being looked at, so the best way to avoid its clutches is by walking away while looking directly at it, and then piecing out once you're uh, clear. Our next creature is the Spider. It looks kind of like a spider, acts kind of like a spider, and is named Spider, so it's a spider. Like most other monsters in the game, the spider can be found roaming around the map and will give chase to players that they spot. Once the player is in range, the spider will shoot webs in the player's direction and those webs will actually explode into more webs. These webs will stick to walls and players, making it very hard to move and escape. If players do find themselves in this sticky situation, all they need to do is start spamming the jump button to move, or else they'll eventually get eaten by the spider. Following the spider, we have the larva. The larva is what we call Mr. Grabs, cause that's what the monster does. The larva is a large slithery creature with arms wide open, ready to grab the closest player. At first it doesn't seem that fast, but when it does get closer, it makes a mad dash towards the player, attempting to grab them. And when it does, it winds up and tosses them towards their teammates, knocking down and hurting both players in the process. Sometimes it just tosses them. It doesn't, it doesn't even aim at the teammates, it just tosses them. And let me tell you, I hate this monster. I don't know what it is, but I always manage to get grabbed by this guy, and no matter how much I juke and try to avoid him, he always grabs and throws me. And I always die by him. It's always me. I don't know. It's, it's always me. I'm not this bad at Lethal Company, but this game, for some reason, I can't avoid the monsters that well. Anyway, 
Moving on to our last LAL3 monster, we have the Eye Guy. This Mike Wazowski looking monster can be found standing still on the map, staring blankly with its one big eye. However, once any type of light is shown at the Eye Guy, the monster gives chase and will attack the player with its two stabby claws. The Eye Guy is fairly harmless as long as nobody shines light at it, so all you have to do is just be aware where the Eye Guy is, forehead. And don't accidentally turn on the light when you're facing the Eye Guy. It's that easy, forehead. Now, moving one more level up, we have LAL4 monsters. These monsters are extremely dangerous and should probably be avoided the moment you spot them. Our first LAL monster is the Barnacle Ball. As the name suggests, this monster is a ball covered in barnacles. It walks around the map using tentacles that protrude from its body. The Barnacle Boy actually has different attack patterns depending on the situation that it's presented with. The one that I died from in my encounter was a Vortex Spin which sucked me into the Barnacle Ball's reach and absolutely destroyed me. Another attack the Barnacle Ball will do is whip players with its tentacles if they're within melee range. Lastly, the Barnacle Boy will also attempt to spit at players if they're too far away, causing the area to be covered in a white smoke. All three of these attacks are different, but are harmful all the same. So gather up your stamina and find yourself an escape route. Our second LAL monster is the Flicker. If you've ever experienced flickering lights in the area, you've probably been in the presence of a flicker. These monsters are invisible while roaming around the map, but you might occasionally spot it flickering in and out of existence. Consider this a warning, because you'll soon experience the full might of the flicker. After a few more instances of taunting the player by appearing and disappearing, the flicker will make its existence known, as it fully reveals its tall and lanky stature to the players in the area. If any player looks at the flicker while it's fully revealed, they're forced to look at it until the flicker eventually kills all the players looking at it. Thankfully, one way to avoid getting hurt by the flicker is by looking at the ground, or by filming it in selfie mode. So if you're hungry for views and want to go viral, but don't want to die in the process of filming the flicker, take a selfie with it. Lastly, we have Big Slap, our one and only LAL5 monster so far. If you run into this one, uh, good luck. Big Slap is an entity of titan-like proportions. He's big, he has a creepy smile, seemingly no eyes, and he gives no Fs. You'll know you're near Big Slap if you hear a menacingly low groan. After that, you better pray that you're close to an exit, cause this big boy is fast, and will chase you down until you die, slapping the hell out of you in the process. While Big Slap is extremely dangerous, he's also a rare spawn compared to his fellow monsters. However, if you find a Big Slap portrait on the map and hold it for more than 3 seconds, you guarantee his spawn. Do what you will with that information, and I hope it's worth going viral. And with that, we've covered every monster found in content warning so far. There are a bunch of unused monsters found in the code of the game, so hopefully we'll see them in future updates. How are y'all enjoying content warning? If you have some fun spooktube vids, feel free to link them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified whenever we upload. This is the Leaderboard, your home for video game facts.